I still stand by, by Terry is better offline. Oh, he is. He's just still broken in Wi-Fi, too. Gluttony lost to a Terry not that long ago. I'm not surprised. That matchup is trash. Like, obviously, Wario is a very flexible character, and they can just, like, get in and just do shit. But holy fuck, they have to work way harder than the Terry player. They have to work way harder to get that shit. Like, they really have to thread the fucking needle to get through Terry's bullshit. Oh, boy. We fit. I don't know. I don't think um, planking is necessarily optimal, but I don't have the answer for this yet. This is a matchup that's an enigma because there's so few of them that I've played. But right now, I want to say that this matchup could be slight losing, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm actually going to say I don't know. Yo, wait. It is Eevee? Wait. Yo, is that you, Staz? Me and you need a first to ten sometime. I want you to prove to me this matchup's trash. But right now, I think this could be one of the other losing matchups. But I'm not 100% on it. It's not a matchup I've played a lot of. I've only played a couple of times, and I I did fine against the character. But, like, this was also at a time when my ledge trapping wasn't as good. I think turtling might be the answer to this shit. Not to mention fair, power wave, and uh, down air hitting them off ledge keeps them honest. Not to mention knocking back the ball and shit. I feel like turtling might be the answer to the matchup. To at least make it even. Deep breathing is also bullshit. Like, literally, if you have the answer to them planking, it's not a problem matchup. But Wii Fit's bullshit. I think Wii Fit is so bullshit. 100% confident in that? Alright. Staz, I want to play you sometime, man. I want to play you and I want to learn. If you're right, I, I will accept it. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not proud of, like, you know, like, I'm not somebody who will not go back on what I say. Like, literally, if I if I get new information, I will, I will own that shit. But right now, I think that I don't have enough information to really say. Nah, fuck it. Fuck it. I'll say it's losing for now. Fuck it. I'll swallow my pride and say it's losing for now. I'm 100% not going to rank Mimmin. I have not played that matchup against any good Mimmins yet. I literally don't know. I think Midmen, I think optimal Midmen could arguably be a top tier, or even a, like I already know it's I already know this character's high tier. I'm sorry, there is no possible way in hell that Midmen is not at the very bare minimum of a high tier. But this character's option coverage is even more broken than Terry's. Like option coverage and ledge trapping is even more busted than Terry's. There's some positions with Midmen that are borderline unfair. Whenever she gets them, when she wins certain points in neutral, like borderline unfair but i think that terry has enough stuff to work around this character not to mention this character it literally has the most shit off li like shit options for landing and getting off the ledge and that's literally like terry's playground so like i don't know i don't know this is all theory from me playing the character min min is a bullshit character oh lol fucking i actually think violet gets shat on by terry i think that matchup is trash because literally, she's all about like spacing these big long ass hitboxes and just just to get body by crack shoot. Like this character just kind of gets rocked. I'm not gonna lie. I think this character just gets absolutely body because she's also slow as shit. Um, wolf. You know, I could see us winning this matchup. But I've played against a lot of good wolves, and, like, I normally, it's, like, slightly in my favor, but, like, this character's actually got a lot of good shit. Good ledge trapping, good neutral, but easily whiff punished. Laser's really not that scary. It's a pretty, it's a decent projectile. Um... Turtling works really well. Can't get off the ledge that well. We trapped this character's landing for free. Yeah, we... Yeah. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. See, it's hard to rank characters that are all neutral. Because Wolf is neutral the character. Like, he really is. He's like... 
he really is the like one of the like he's got one of the best neutrals in the game. But his neutral's only as good as the player playing him. Game and Watch is Terry's worst? Absolutely not. That matchup is not bad at all. I think that matchup's borderline free if you turtle. If you're aggressive, Terry, then yeah, you're gonna get shat on. Um This is a hard one. Because like the majority of wolves I beat. Like, I'm not gonna lie. I beat the majority of wolf players I've played, even good ones. But, like, I don't know. Like, this character right here, like, all of like ter ter all of Terry's strengths work really well against this character, obviously. The neutral is even, but, like, the thing is, is, like, anytime you put this character in the corner and he tries to cross you up, he can't cross you up because of Rising Tackle. He can't get past you when you get him in the corner. He's got deep... Actually, no. Because forward tilt's such a good boxing tool for, like, swatting away, like, if I miss space anything. Like, forward tilt keeps me pretty honest. Not only that, like... Added, like, it, Nair and forward tilt are really good boxing tools for whenever I don't space properly. You know what? Yeah. I'm going back to even. Like, because Wolf actually does have some decent boxing tools against Terry. And neutral. So, I'd probably see neutral as even. Um, Wolf has great ledge trapping against Terry. As well. Not as good as Terry's, obviously, but, like, it's still good. Because he can angle down forward tilt and shit like that as well. So, like, that's definitely something that he's got in his favor. But, like, um, I feel like Terry actually doesn't struggle too hard against landing against Wolf, believe it or not. Because we have the mix-up of B-Reverse Power Dunk, and he's actually one of the few characters that actually struggle with catching that mix-up. So, like, playing in that position is kind of hard. And Terry definitely does a lot better at catching him in a juggle state. So, it's like, it'd have to be, like, slight. It'd have to be slight. It'd have to be. Terry, is he any of you playing me or a toddler? Oop! Oop, look at you! Look at you getting this fat ass timeout! Oop! Got his ass. He was right, though. Like, low key, guys, I'm five years old. I don't know if you guys knew this. Um,. But yeah, I don't even think I'm legally allowed to be, like, streaming on Twitch. <laughs> Alright, moving on. Man, no, I can't, I can't go back on this. Like, it's so hard for me to put this somewhere. I mean, if, you're, if I'm basing it off of me as a player, I, I don't think I've ever lost to a wolf in bracket at all with Shotos. And I've played this matchup a lot as Terry... And I feel like I'm not as consistent as I am with Shotos because of my parry options with Shotos. But with Terry, like, I feel like this character gets so... <sighs> Fuck it. I'm going to say even. I'm going to say even, chat. I'm going to quit going back on this. I can't believe I got 56 of you motherfuckers in here. Y'all really came out to play today. Thank you guys so much for coming through. All right. So that's out the way. I'm going to stick with even. I'm going to stick with even for now. But, like, honest to God, I really feel like it could... I, I don't think... There's no way in hell we lose it. It's either even or slight winning. I can't make up my mind on it. <coughs> this is a good-ass stream. Hey, man, thank you so much, Crisis. I appreciate that. All right, next. <laughs> oh, poor Yoshi, man. Poor Yoshi. Man, where am I putting you, man? How... I know that Yoshi loses this matchup, but how bad does Yoshi lose it? How bad does Yoshi lose it? This is a matchup that I have played a lot of good Yoshis in. And let me just say, Crack Shoot is just the freest button against this character. Because Yoshi's all about just kind of spacing and throwing shit out. And Terry just does it better. He just does it better. He literally does what Yoshi does better. Like... This has got to be 6-4. This has got to be 6-4, man. It's got to be. Especially with turtling. Because, like, literally Yoshi cannot land any of his combo starters against this character. He can't. He can't hardly win neutral unless I overcommit. But if I'm playing the way I'm talking about with, like, turtling and, like, being smart with what you're positioned and shit. Terry's fair and there. What the fuck you mean? Like, I mean, like, are you saying, like, what do they do? They actually just body, like... Like, yeah, Farinair literally beat, like, all of their aerials. Like, actually all of them. 
I've even seen like I've I've sometimes seen like fair and back air trade with Nair, but they've always lost the fair. It's just it's just not fair. Yeah, same with Ryu. Yeah, I actually think Ryu beat Yoshi too. I actually agree with you on that, Benetta. Yeah, poor Yoshi, man. Yo, yo, god, god, man. What the fuck does this? What the fuck does this green happy dinosaur do? Besides die. Oh my god. I don't know, chat. Yeah. Next. Oh, Young Link. Um. I'd actually say Young Link. I actually, okay, actually, I'm taking this. This is probably like the first zoner I will put down in even. Because Young Link's advantage state is absurdly good against Terry. Because of how quick he can just pump out fire arrows and boomerangs. Like, his option coverage for covering the ground and, like, carpet bombing anywhere that fucking Terry's going to be is actually pretty good. Um... Terry still has all the strengths of, like, dealing with zoners, but the, the raw volume of, of projectiles that uh, Young Link can put out makes it to where it's a lot harder for me to close the distance. It takes more time. But at the end of the day, all the stuff I said about, like, the zoner matchups before, it all applies. Um, Young Link can't cross us up with back air, fair, or any of that bullshit that she normally does because Rising Tackle's still a threat. Can't get off ledge. It gets his landing shark pretty hard. But his advantage state and neutral is honestly... I'd actually say his advantage state and neutral borderline... Borderline are better in this matchup. But his disadvantage is easily exploited. And, like, Terry's neutral is good enough to get through his shit to, like, push him to the corner. To where it makes it to where he has to, like, find his way past Terry. But, yeah. I'm honestly going to say this is the first zoner I will put as even for now. Oh, God. Fuck that. I'm not even going to try. Banjo? So, like, the thing is about characters like Banjo and, uh, and, like, you know, certain zoners, like, they shut it down to where you can't really crack shoot in neutral, which is okay, because that's not really a smart thing to do unless you're whip punishing anyways. Um... But at the same time, like, getting around their shit can be kind of annoying. Auto can't, like, having a power dunk, the auto cancel version, to be able to go over their bullshit is super useful. Um, again, catching their landing is also really good. But the one thing that's really annoying about um, catching a banjo in disadvantage is they have multiple jumps to mix up, too. Like, if you keep track of that, that's not so bad, but it's kind of annoying still. Um, less trapping the characters free still. Um, combo food. Big time combo food. Holy fuck. We beat the shit out of this bear. Like, like if, if, if we beat this shit, the beat, we beat this bear so hard when we open him up that PETA, like, borderline wants to get the game canceled because it's just too ugly to what we do to this bear when we open him up. It's actually that bad. Like, it's actually that bad. But, <sighs> grenade is actually kind of annoying. Grenade is actually kind of annoying. Same thing with his zoning and stuff like that. Whenever it comes to, like, doing, like, beer versus grenade into, like, uh, beagle b a bullet and shit. The great thing is, is, like, you can catch grenade easily because of how easy the grab, how big the grab box is on that item with Nair. And, like, Nair will also just go right through, like, the eggs and shit. So, like, yeah. We definitely have tools to work around that. But at the same time, like, once we get into the corner, like, Rising Tackle just goes right through his grenade. It'll actually just go right through it, and the- I forget- I think he's a middleweight, so he, like, dies around, like, 120-ish or so, depending on rage. Um, so, yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and say, yeah, mm, This- the bear can't kill for shit outside of Wonder Wing. Like, neutral and everything, the bear does really well in neutral, believe it or not, but it's the killing. And because they can't kill us, they deal with go. That's actually a very, very good point. That's actually a very good point. That's actually a very good point. Like, the fact that the bear can't kill outside of, like, Wonder Wing or Grab Confirms is a bitch and a half outside of, like, them, like, getting things like edge guards or ledge traps. They, they do ledge trap well. I'll give them that. But killing is just, like... If you understand how to avoid their kill setups and you're really good at just not running into their bullshit... Like, yeah. 
Bandage is only two units lighter than Terry. Okay, so he probably wouldn't die till like around like 130 or so. Probably a little bit earlier with Rage. I feel pretty confident about that. I've played against a lot of Banjos, and I rarely lose this matchup, so I'm going to go ahead and say we're winning it. Alright, finally fucking Zelda? I don't fucking know. I have not played any top Zeldas in this matchup, only quick play Zeldas, and I do not want to judge the matchup off that. Um, this matchup is annoying. It's annoying. It's very annoying. Like, we get in, we body this character, but this character's reversal options are super annoying to deal with. Like, the scrubby, mashy Zelda players, like, obviously you can bait that shit out and punish them. Like, with a crack sheet, if they whiff or anything like that, you can be good at just, like, punishing them. And, like, fast power wave is really good for interrupting them from charging Knight as well. Um, but this character's advantage state against us is really obnoxious, because, like, they just charge Knight whenever you're, like, trying to land, and then you just die. But, like... Yeah, fuck it. I'll, I'll rank this one. At the very worst, it's even, but I definitely don't think we lose this gimmick. And finally, Zero Suit. And I do, th I put this, I put Zero Suit here with full confidence. Plus one. Okay, I've actually played against um, uh, a good Zero Suit player. He's actually from my region. Um, we've uh, we've ran a couple times, we played a couple games, uh, a couple sets on his stream. And for the most part, anytime I went Terry, it was almost always my favorite. But anytime I went Shoto... He fucked me up. He fucks up my Shoto so hard. And his name's Winky Face. I'm sure you guys know who he is. He's a he's a homie. He's been a friend of mine for years. And I openly think that Terry has the kit, like the, uh, the the actual option in his kit to deal with Flip Kick. He's like one of the only fucking characters in there that actually has an answer to Flip Kick. Quite literally, anytime I'm standing at roll distance or anything like that, and they Flip Kick, I can just Rising Tackle and I can punish it. And if they ever do it in neutral, I Crack Shoot. And a lot of times, because of the arc of Flip Kick kind of like goes like this and the crack shoot kind of does the same thing at the same arc it stays with her and it ends up like hitting her if you know when she's going to do it and in the situation where you don't know what's coming and you don't react to it you just upbeat anytime they try to hit bounce off your shield or anything like that because whenever they bounce off of your shield that whole animation where they're flipping and shit they're open and terry can punish that on top of that this character is light like any of her cross-ups or anything like that, because she's so fucking light, she dies super early as well. So turtling is super effective, and rising tackle out of shield kills Matt early as well. Um, another character that's main neutral is, like, spacing short hop aerials and shit. So again, like, as I talked about other points, easy to whip punish, easy to set up on with slow power wave to set up approaches to push them to the corner, to make them either challenge you or not, things like that. So, yeah. Um... Obviously, you all know the Zero Suit. Like, you know, Zero Suit's win condition. It's all about landing aerial and, like, spacing things like Zare and shit like that. And spacing out things like, um, their, um, yeah. Zare, that's another thing I want to make a point of. If Zare is spaced low, like, where they're, like, hitting low on the shield and stuff like that, Crack Shoot goes over it. And another thing to know is, uh, a lot of people forget this about Zares, but they have item priority. Meaning that if you hit them with a hitbox, it turns off the hitbox. And, um, in some situations, you can just turn off the hitbox and then, like, dash attack or, like, something like that really quick to kind of hit them and push him away. So, like, yeah. He's got all the tools in the world to not only, like, beat this character, but not have to necessarily focus on, like, catching her. Because he just can go cover, like, with turtling, he just covers everything whenever it comes to where she's going to land and where she's going to be. So, like, whenever Terry gets the lead, he could optimally just camp center stage if he really wants to and just kind of, like, throw out some safe pokes and just wait for him to commit and not be. He doesn't have to really do anything. But, yeah. Like, and I, I really, I really honest to God feel that we win this matchup. If you're aggressive, Terry, you're going to lose. You're absolutely 100% going to lose. Also, Mr. Sprinkles, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome welcome to the dojo. And, uh, and Jay Rue, appreciate you too. Wombo114, all you guys, I missed you guys. Thank you so much for the follow. I appreciate you guys so much. So yeah, this matchup, I've played it enough to really feel that we win it for those reasons alone. Zero Suit Camps will lose. I'm telling you right now, Vendetta, if, you, if you're focusing on option coverage, if you're good at controlling center stage, and you don't overcommit, and you know how to whiff punish her, like, spacing her aerials, and you understand how to play around Zare, and you understand, like you know, like, how to, like, punish her on block and shit like that. Like, you can't punish her on block because her shit's safe. Oh, fuck, right? It's really fucking safe. But if you, like, mix it up with things like spot dodge, down tilt, 
and things like that. Spot dodging is really good against Zero Suit, especially West Harry. Okay. And and the fact that all of her cross-ups can almost pretty much be punished with rising tackle is super good. Unless they like max space it. They max space it, the only thing you can really do is set up something like slow power wave or like, you know, take your stage control. Which with them constantly putting themselves in the corner, which is a big part of our win objective, it's really you it's really hard for them to like find any kind of in if you're playing that way and not committing and playing their game. All right, that's the problem. That's the uh, that's the fundamental problem of that matchup for them, okay? Because they can't make you play their game. And you also got to think of it this way, Chad. I've got six minutes. I've got six minutes to fight, make her fuck up once, and I can get the percent lead and just camp center stage and not have to chase her, okay? And if she does have the percent lead, she's gonna be throwing out safe pokes and stuff like that, and eventually I'm going to get go making my option coverage and pressure already better. You gotta understand something, chat. You gotta understand something. All the main points I'm talking about are just base Terry. This is not even including Go. When he gets Go, everything changes. Everything fucking changes at that point. So, if, I'm telling you, man. Like, Zero Suit's got a good camp game. Terry's option coverage doesn't care. As long as you play to act second and control center stage and don't play their game. And you have a good poke game and you understand how to whip punish them when they're swinging at nothing. Oh, well, looks like that was it. Well, holy shit. Let me take a let me take a step back and look at this. I dead ass said this character only loses to two people. This might be optimistic, but it's what I think. I honestly god, I I literally was racking my brain and going back and forth on this, and I really think that turtling Terry that is focusing on acting second, controlling center stage, is just broken. He is just so goddamn broken. Like, hold on, chat. Like, listen to me. This move right here is negative 7 to the negative 8. All right? You space that back into this move that comes out frame 8. That does a shit ton of shield damage and is safe. It's a free fucking on shield frame trap that if your opponent swings or does anything, you get a free opening. Not to mention when you do this, you're buffering holding down so you're charge parsing and you can buffer holding shield as well. For any kind of out of shield aerial that they have, and I guarantee you most aerials don't even reach that far that come out of shield that are frame 7. Especially when you max space, max space it, because this fucking hitbox right here is so goddamn big, it's so easy to space. And because of how much air acceleration he has in the air, it's what makes this so broken. Not to mention how fucking disjointed this move is. Look, look at this shit. Look at this shit. His arm's here. It's right fucking here. Why is the hitbox... All the way around here. Moves dumb. Like, look at these fucking moves, chat. This one right here, you can get an air out out of a sec- out of, Like, you can get, like, one down air out of a short hop into an air. It's so stupid. It is so stupid, chat. It's so fucking stupid. Like... Jab one, negative six. So, like, you can do, like, jab one block strings and shit. Like... Down smash, frame 8, max space. It actually is pretty safe. It says negative 23, but if you max space that shit, I rarely ever get punished because I buffer I buffer, um, charge parsing shield, and then if they try to jump and punish it, they get a bead. Like... Oh my god, dude. Not to mention this character's raw priority. Like, if you want to talk about a character that could literally, if at any situation he knows what you're going to do, he can just throw out some meaty button to beat whatever the fuck he wants... He's got it right here with fucking burn knuckle. And if he's not comfortable with that, he waits for you to throw something out and he crack shoots. It's like he literally has an answer for every button you put out. Like, literally everything. And the thing is, he doesn't just have this one that has a ton of startup. He's got this bullshit here. Just to let you know how bullshit his dash deck is, it beats and like I've had it literally just beat Ganon's Nair. Ganon aerials lose to Terry dash tech. 
Like, the priority, guys. The priority. The neutral. The advantage state. All of that is absolute horseshit. Beyond horseshit. The pinnacle of horseshit. Shit, uh, Chip, thank you so much for the follow and the fucking tier one sub, man. I appreciate it. Like, I'm not gonna be one of these fucking guys out here telling you that my character is not 100% unfair whenever you play them optimally. The moment these Terry mains stop mashing and are smart with what they're fucking doing, y'all think the meta's bad now. This character is going to be a fucking problem. Holy shit. Oh my god, another tier, fresh tier one. No, it wasn't fresh. It was a uh, it was a uh, Terry Yukin coming through with the four months. I appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot, fam. Thank you so much, and welcome to the dojo. And like, no. that's not even no factoring way. in his fucking Who broken ass. Wait, shit. the fuck? I Did I get another I one? I like, so that's not even talking about his I, insane I punish game. That's not even talking about like go. We're not even talking about go yet, chat. We're not even talking about go. Like, you guys don't, like, you guys, are you starting to see it? The moment people start spacing this safe shit, and then just, like, knowing that, hey, you can't reach me from this range if you up B, or out of shield, whatever the fuck, and if you do, you're getting whiff punished, and if you don't, you're getting shield poked or shield broken, and if you jump away, you're getting stuck at ledge, you literally can option select around everything your opponent does. Everything. Like, literally everything you can play around. As long as you understand that what your opponent's options are in the position that I'm talking about, like whether it's like spacing or whatever the fuck, or when they're in disadvantage, or we're in neutral, or anything like that, if you understand the flow chart, and you understand how to option select around your opponent's options, and you understand that, you can literally dumpster every character in this fucking game. And I mean that. I mean that honestly. Aerial Power Wave is super underrated as a spacing tool too. I just... Who in their right mind thought this was okay? Like... Uh, we're not even talking about his grab, chat. His fucking forward throw sets up in the tech chases. His down throw is a combo tool into 50%. Like... This, man! Look at, like... Okay, I'm done. I made my point. I've made my point.